Microlearning often uses a combination of different media to get across the instructional message. This can include the creation of live action videos, software screen captures, presentation slides, animated explainer videos, and even podcasts. While each of these delivery mediums have their own design affordances, it's important to consider some common design practices that can help make your microlearning more effective. The first is that if you use any type of audio in your microlearning, make sure it's of high quality. You want the voice or voices coming across to the learner having the right tone, pacing, and volume. And without a lot of ums or ahs or hesitation, you don't want monotone delivery and you don't want any annoying background sounds like the humming of an air conditioner or someone speaking in the background or a dog barking. You want it very clear audio. In fact, audio is the key to quality microlearning. Learners want content that's easy to listen to and that won't hurt their ears. I, I can't tell you how many times I've turned off a video that looked good and had great animations but suffered from poor audio. In my experience, learners will put up with poor video much longer than poor audio. So if you need to spend money somewhere on production equipment, spend it on the audio. Now, this doesn't mean video is the poor stepchild. If you truly want the best possible microlearning, you want high quality video and high quality audio. Here are some key things to keep in mind in terms of video. First, do not, if you can help it at all, do not simply record a person giving a presentation in front of a classroom full of learners and then break that up and present it as microlearning. Please don't. Recording a classroom lecture from the back or side of the room creates a sense of distance when it's delivered as microlearning content. It seems tempting because it's easy, relatively inexpensive, and doesn't take a lot of planning, but that's not a good way to convey a learning message. Instead, like you see here, you want to create a connection between the instructor and the learner. You want to present an experience for the learner so the learner, which is you in this case, and me as the instructor in this case, is having a conversation, an intimate, a sense of intimacy. This creates that intimacy and reduces the perspective of having distance between me, the instructor, and you, the learner. Also, just having slides on the screen with the disembodied voice is not only ineffective from a learner's perspective, but it's sometimes it's downright painful to watch without a great deal of animation, transitions, or other video effects. If at all possible, include video of the instructor speaking interspersed with slides. Disembodied voices and static, unmoving slides is not a good way to convey a learning message. While it's possible to learn a great deal more about producing quality microlearning videos and audios, these few tips provide a strong foundation and will give you a good start on creating quality, impactful microlearning. Designing effective microlearning means taking the time to create short, to-the-point learning content. If you follow these guidelines, you'll be creating effective microlearning in no time.